morning. I want to thank everyone for coming this morning. Um, today is Mission Sunday, and so uh, I want to just remember our missionaries. And um, Junior Church is available. There we go. I have sound. Thank you. Um, Emily and or Emily and Brittany are back there teaching Junior Church. And uh, next week will be John Wells. So if you want to get your video today, come look at that. This morning's uh, scripture reference is out of Isaiah 55, verses 8 through 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Let's pray. Father, we come to you today thankful. Thankful for everybody that's here, just thankful for everybody that's watching online. Lord, I just pray right now that your will will be done, that uh, we are able to learn from your word and just be able to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. This time I'll ask that you stand and sing. Morning. morning. Let's sing without him. Two verses. Jesus saved.
Sunday, so at this time we're going to hear from one of the people on our missions board. We're going to hear from Saint or from Sue Rickenbacker. <laughs> no, you would not. I wish I was handy this morning. <laughs> no, you do not. Not yet. I do not. Is not it not nice down there? <laughs> She's not there yet. She's not there yet. Okay. <laughs> Well, since our church supports our sewing group, um, I thought you'd like to know what we've been up to. We did um, Operation Christmas Child Shoe Boxes for 20 years and um, transitioned over to local charities in the last couple years. So this year we did um, not all local charities, I'm sorry. Some, some local charities, some not. <laughs> so we did um, Bridges for Boys, and these are shorts that go to um, mostly Africa and third world countries. We did 50 pairs of those. We did little dresses for Africa. Um, we made the pillowcase dresses, if you know what a pillowcase dress is. It's just kind of a, you can make it out of a pillowcase. It's about that wide, and then it's gathered at the front and back, and then it's got those um, straps uh, that tie at the shoulders. And then we put little pockets with some sleeves and stuff on, lace and rickrack and such. And then um, one project that we're just starting is called Sandy Panties. And in Africa and third world countries, um, when the girls have their monthly periods, they cannot go to school or they don't go to school because they don't have any protection. So, um, and they don't want the disposable ones because they said they just littered the country with them. <laughs> so and they could get everywhere. So we make them out of cloth, and then they wash them out. Um, locally, we've made a lot of what we call adult clothing covers for the nursing homes um, for when they eat. We've made a lot of walker bags for the nursing homes. Uh, we've made um, uh, baby blankets for the NICU unit in Findlay. Uh, not by choice in Canton. Um, um, drawstring bags and then they put like uh, care items in them. They put um, maybe lotions and I'm not sure what all, but they put personal uh, items in there that they use, that comfort items. Um, the foster care in Canton, we've made small uh, pillowcases and large pillowcases and we donated some large pillows and then we bought small pillows and we put a um, little stuffed animal in there, in the little ones, and a big stuffed animal in the big ones. And I forget, they put something else in there. Anyhow, then when they, when kids are uh, going into foster care, then they give them those. And then we have supported the Blue Star Mothers with pillowcases. We made, um, last year I think we made about 300 pillowcases for the Blue Star Mothers. Um, and then they fill them with all kinds of things for the service men and women. So those are the things that we've been doing. <laughs> Thought you'd want to know. <laughs> I 
Thank you, Sue. Um, again, today being Mission Sunday, I want us to remember all of our missionaries. Uh, we've heard different things going on from several different missionaries, um, and it's we support different ones, and I know uh, we are supporting right now the, the tennis shoes for CEF, and we are um, supporting different ones. We have the Voice of Hope here in Forest as well, and so just remember each and every one of them. Um, as we move forward this morning, we have been looking at Words Matter and The Word Matters, and we're going to be in John chapter 11. And I want you to think about this for a moment. We all know we're getting ready to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ here in a couple weeks. But there was another resurrection that we have heard about and we all know of, and that was of Lazarus. But what do you know about that? What do you know about the, the resurrection of Lazarus? And as we were studying this, I thought to myself, we know we all go through certain problems. We all go through certain issues in life. We all have different worries or stresses or um, fears or things that goes on in our life. So how do you handle those things? When you're feeling stressed, how do you handle those things? Some of us try to hide them uh, because we want to be pretty private. Uh, so others want to share everything and sometimes they share a little bit too much. And then, um, so, but some people want to uh, share them just so they can be praying and then some problems are so personal that maybe they'll just share with a few close friends or whatever. But how do you handle your problems? Um, the point is here, we all face tragedy and difficulties. Right now, looking back, and probably for those watching online, I'm guessing that there's some of you that are going through some stresses. And maybe, whether it be a health issue or a financial issue or a, or a relationship issue, we're all going through some kind of a stress. We're all going through some kind of a trouble or at least know someone who is. So today we're going to look at how Jesus' followers and closest friends handled adversity and heartbreak whenever it came their way, and how we should handle it. So this morning we're going to look at John chapter 11, starting with verse 1, and we'll look at verses 1 and 2. It says, Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragment of oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Now, in, in some translation, it just says, now a certain man was sick, and it doesn't necessarily even mention the word Lazarus of Bethany until later on there in verse 2. But, and the reason is, it says, now a certain man was sick. And some scholars believe that the reason they just say, now a certain man was sick, is because it emphasizes that Lazarus is not the primary focus of this story. Um, if there's any English teachers out there or anything like that, even with the sentence, now a certain man was sick, that's the main part of the story. And now it's something that comes in and describes the main point of this paragraph or this sentence, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha is describing the main part of this sentence. So the main part of this story is Jesus and his power to face and fix every situation. It was the Mary, it was the Mary who anointed the Lord with fragment of oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Most of us, we are so narrow-minded that when something starts going on with us, that's all we can think about. It takes up our minds, it takes up our attention. We, we start having a health issue or we start worrying about that specific thing, so much so that it can become, become a health issue if we worry too much. It's a proven fact that if you stress out too much about certain things that it can cause health issues. So whenever we're going through things and we start asking those questions, why me? Why me? If, if we changed our and started saying instead of why me, what's going on with me, I got to concentrate on what's happening to me, I got to see what's going on with me. If we changed our outlook and started saying, God, can I help you be glorified in this situation? Right now, if you're facing a health issue, a financial issue, whatever you're going through, I want you to start thinking, your think, changing your thinking and start asking, God, how can I help you be glorified in this situation? 
We all face the problem. We all have problems in life, one way or the other. So the second point is there's a plan. There's a plan. Let's look at verses 3 through 7. Therefore the sister sent him, sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom he loved, you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, and the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, so when he had heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let's go to Judea again. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, God has a plan. Many times we have a plan that we think, you know what, when this happens, we just got to fix it ourselves. You know what, whenever this goes on, we got to fix it ourselves. Whether it, we try to do home remedies for this sickness or whether we try to, um, try to fix the relationship issue that's going on or whether we try to do things to help us ourselves financially. But we got to realize that sometimes whenever we are going to do these things, we need to give it to God and we need to realize that it may not necessarily make sense on, in our human minds. God knows best and he already has a plan for whatever it is you're facing right now. God knows best and he has a plan. And if you look here, he says, this sickness is not unto death. This sickness for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. That's God's plan. Whatever you're facing right now, whatever you're going through, it's not death. So God, we all know normally, all of us, I'm thinking all of us know how this story ends. If God can raise a dead man, he can take care of your issues as well. And then, and then I see in verses 5 and 6, because I, I'm, I'm the type that when I get a phone call, I think this may be important, and I want to try to help people out, and I think, oh my, and it's just like a lot of others. And I, we, I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday. The, the loudest voice is not necessarily always the priority. It shouldn't be. And we see in verses 5 and 6 there where um, it says, Now Jesus loved Martha and sister and, and Lazarus, so... When he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. What? <laughs> in my head, this just sounds crazy. You know, he loved these guys, so he stayed where he was. In our thinking, we think, wait, Jesus loved them so much that he stayed and didn't go to them? Jesus loved them so much, why didn't he rush to their need right away? You ever think about that? God, if you truly love me, why aren't you fixing this right now? God, if you truly love me, why aren't you taking care of my issue right now? I need it done now. Somebody told me this week that most of the time, if, if somebody is saying something needs to be done right away, it's normally a red flag. And that would be the situation right here. Why didn't he drop everything and go to Lazarus? That's probably where we would all be. Hey, my brother's dying. You've got to come and get him and fix him now. Because God's plan is always better than our own. We may not understand it. Maybe it doesn't make sense to us in human standards. But God's plan is always better than our own. I like what one commentary said. It says this. The delay did serve several purposes. It strengthened the sisters' faith in the Lord by forcing them to trust him. It made it clear that Lazarus was truly dead, and hence that Jesus' raising of his own was indeed a miracle. And as always, Jesus operated according to God's timetable, not man's. So then, Jesus initiates his plan, and we see that in verse 7. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let's go to Judea again. Huh. Now, you would think that the disciples being good friends with Mary and, and Martha and Lazarus and all that, they would think, yeah, that's a good idea. But let's look. We see the pessimism. Let's look at verses 8 through 16. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and you are going to there again? Jesus answered, 
Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of the world. But he walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after, after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go and that he might wake up. Then the disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get well. And then Jesus spoke to, of his death, but they thought he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus said to them simply and plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go, that we may die with him. You see, we can go back and the disciples were scared. We see pessimism. Later on we, in the chapter we, uh, that we'll look at next week, we see where the sister said, Jesus, if you would have been here, our, our brother wouldn't have died. How many times do we have pessimism with how God is handling things? The disciples, the disciples were scared and thought it wouldn't make sense if Jesus didn't go. I mean, if he did, why in the world are you going to go there? They're seeking to kill you. It wasn't that they didn't want to see Lazarus get better. They was just thinking that their plan was better because it would glorify God if he didn't die. Then we see in verse 8, Rabbi, the Jews sought to stone you and you're going there again? It just doesn't make sense to them that they want to go there with a place where they want to kill Jesus. It doesn't make sense a lot of times in what we're going through and how Jesus wants to take care of it. Sometimes what we need the most, we have to go through certain situations before we can figure out what God's trying to do in our lives. And Jesus follows up with a profound statement, and we already looked at these in verses 9 and 10. Are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of the world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. You know, the first time that I was... I read those two verses and, you know, in my deep scholarly mind, I read those and I read it again. And after a deep study, I thought, this is, this is, I had one word. I thought, what? What in the world does those verses even mean? And after studying some more, I looked closer and it did make sense there in verses 9 and 10. It means God has a plan. The plan hadn't been fulfilled yet. The plan hadn't been fulfilled but it will be fulfilled in God's timing. God has a plan for your life as well. What you're going through, I'm not saying God caused it. I'm not saying Jesus caused it. I'm not saying that, that at all. But maybe God's wanting to show you something. Maybe God's wanting to use that to be able to see that he can be glorified. If it was his time to die, that would have been the time. Otherwise, he would have been protected as if he was doing his father's work. You see, God has a plan for your life also. We may not understand it. We may not really, right now, especially in the midst of the battle, we may be thinking, why am I going through this? But I want to encourage you to allow him to work his plan in you. You know, we, uh, we've been looking at words matter and the word matters. And we're going to look at the conclusion of this next week. And I did that intentionally because I want you to think about what you're going through. Think about somebody you know going through something. Realize that God has a plan. Remember, God knows about your problem. He knows your hurt. He knows your pain. He knows your trouble. He knows what you're facing. Even though we don't know the outcome, try not to be facing it with pessimism like the disciples. But you don't understand. We can't do it this way. But you don't understand. This is going to change my way of thinking. Allow him to fix that that plan instead of trying to fix things you, the way you want to. Remember, everything happens in God's timing. Again, most of you probably, if not all of you, know how this story ends. But when we have, when we have our own problems, our own issues that we're going through, we automatically think we can fix them on our own. We can worry about the what-ifs and, and what could happen or what may happen. But God knows the future, and he has a plan now we just need to allow him to let him. We need just to allow him to work in that. So step out of the way so that you can see a miracle.
He's got, we know the problem. Sometimes we may not know the plan, but we need to trust that Jesus got, has the plan in mind and stop facing it with pessimism. Let's pray. Father, we come to you today. Lord, as we get ready to, in a couple of weeks, celebrate your resurrection, and as we look at the resurrection of Lazarus, we know that you are a mighty God. We know that you can take care of our problems. We know that you can take care of the things that's going on in our lives. But Lord, right now, so many times we start doubting and we start asking the questions, what if he doesn't fix this? What, what if, what if, what if he allows me to go through this certain circumstance? What if he allows me to go through a little bit of heartbreak? So Lord, right now, for those that are going through a problem, those that, are, that know somebody that's going through a problem, help them to lay that all at your feet and trust you. Trust that your plan is better than our plan. Trust that your plan is better than our own way of thinking. Help us to stop relying on human standards, human ideas, and our own ideas, and our own ways of thinking, and help us to trust fully in you and give it over to you completely. In Jesus' name, amen. This time I'm going to ask that you stand and sing a sweet hour of prayer. <clears throat> <laughs> so um, let's sing happy birthday to John.
I don't know how he got a wife so young, but, um, but anyway. Uh, are there any praises this morning? Sharon? That's great. We did have tornado warnings and <laughs> Messy did Messy did to say take shelter, but where do you take shelter in a house that's on the silk? <laughs> <laughs> I went down yesterday to Greenfield, had a good weekend, uh, Friday night, Saturday morning for a youth explosion and that was pretty good to uh, um, be able to be down there, and so that was good. And I do have some camp flyers for anybody wishing to go to church camp this year. So, um, as far as prayer requests go, we have several again today. We think of Rebecca Whitaker, Bob Bash, who lives out in the country, Jeff Rickenbacker, um, Bill Limes, Kelly Rickle, Jenny, which is Katie Thrill's co worker, uh, Austin Douglas, Dick Osmond. Um, and Dan, which is Katie's boss's husband. Uh, Jenny Prine, as I mentioned last week, were, um, has been diagnosed with breast cancer. Speaking of mission Sunday, uh, she's one of our Christian Union missionaries. And then just remember the family of Jerry Schlick. We've been praying for Jerry, and he passed away this week, so remember him. Uh, continue to remember Tim Curtin and Karen. Uh, continue to remember Melvin Donnell, Walt Burke, Patty Hemmerling, Irene Strasball. Continue to remember Joy. She goes back to the doctor this Thursday to hopefully hear some results back. Uh, remember the situation in Russia and Ukraine. Um, also continue to remember Chris and Regina that maybe they won't be uh, deployed. Uh, still continue to remember Rod. He's got some appointments coming up. They're trying to figure out what all's going on with him. So continue to remember him in prayer. Um, I was just told a while ago he walked six miles yesterday, so he seems to be doing pretty good. I think he's been averaging about five, so uh, slacker. Um, but, <laughs> um, and then continue to remember Joyce friend Jeannie Snyder. Uh, we mentioned that they wasn't able to do the surgery down at, I believe it was at Ohio State, and um, but they, she is going to be getting some shots in her stomach. She's now at Lima, or going through Lima Memorial, and she's getting some shots in her stomach. And they're hoping and praying that she may, may be able to actually do the surgery in about three to four weeks over at Lyman Memorial. So just remember her. Continue to remember Becky Anderson with what she's got going on with her vocal cords. Um, remember Pat Geisner, who's got non-alcoholic cirrhosis of the liver. Uh, continue to remember John Wall's mom, Nancy. And then also remember Joy's brother, Terry. Uh, he had a TIA. Continue to remember Charlotte Lee. Uh, continue to remember Mary Curtis's daughter Kelly. Uh, she's been having a severe shaking and neurological symptoms. She was able to go to work on Friday, but Mary said she still could use prayer. I heard back from Brenda Watson. There, she's likely going to likely going to go to rehab somewhere after her fall. So just continue to remember her. Also, continue to remember Hilda. She has a heart cath on Friday. Um, remember Rob and Doris's daughter. Uh, she has a blood clot in her liver. Uh, continue to remember Mary Curtis's granddaughter, Megan. I haven't heard any updates from her, but last we heard she was in LA and ICU and her organs were shutting down. I got a phone call from Dave Stansbury today. Uh, he asked that the church be praying on April 13th that you're going to be putting a lead wire in his pacemaker. And then there's Wayne and Sandy. <laughs> Sue, I'm not sure, not sure you said you'd rather be where Wayne and Sandy are. They're actually at their daughter's house in Powell, Ohio. They left out yesterday morning at five o'clock and delay after delay after delay after cancellation. And so they are supposed to be flying out now as at one o'clock this afternoon. So be praying for them. Uh, some of the people that was on that flight, they got booked for eight o'clock this morning. Some of them got one o'clock this afternoon and some of them even had to wait till eight o'clock in the morning to be able to go out. So um, he told me that now they can understand what Sharon goes through. <laughs> But seriously, just remember Wayne and Sandy that they're able to be able to leave um, and be able to get a rental car once they do get down to the airport because that's affected that as well. So um, at this time, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you today. We're thankful for your praises. And Lord, we just ask right now that you remember each and every one of these requests. Lord, if there's any that I may have forgotten or if there's any unspoken, we ask that you remember them as well. 
And Lord, we pray your will will be done in each and every one of these situations. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, at this point, we'll go for a few announcements. Um, just again, if you are wanting to give to missions, uh, you just mark your checks accordingly and you can put them back out there in the foyer or if you're paying through PayPal or Menmo, just again, you can do that as well. Um, just mark it accordingly or even for the Sunday School Fund or the memorials and we can go from that. Uh, we Volunteers are needed. Uh, there's every different ways you can volunteer to minister. There's a list of couple of ministries on the back of your bulletin. Also, there's a trustee sign-up list back in the back. We would ask that again, if you sign up for that and you do the job, please write down also that it, it's done. Um, also, April Food Pantry. April Food Pantry is coming up on the 25th. We ask that you have your donations here by Easter Sunday, the 17th of April. Uh, things that they would like our church to donate would be spaghetti sauce, scallop, cheese, boxed potatoes, canned beef, like the 14 ounce size, they said like Keystone, and then also some tuna helpers. So just remember those things. Um, also, tomorrow, if you remember, tomorrow, if you haven't said anything to Tom or Rod, today is the day. Say something to them because they're taking cans over to recycle tomorrow. So let them know if you'd like for them to pick things up and um, let them know about how many cans you have. That way they know, um, kind of be prepared a little bit. I know they'll get the ones that's out here. They'll get probably the ones that's inside the foyer here. Uh, and then they'll come around and get some of the cans at your houses too. So just... Uh, um, be aware of that. Um, this Wednesday is Bible study at 7 p.m. in the foyer or in the fellowship hall. So um, just remember that. And then next Sunday we will be doing communion. Um, here we'll have we'll be taking communion next Sunday. So just keep that in mind. And then we have Holy Week services starting up on that next following week. And that'll be on Thursday, Monday, Thursday service. They're going to do a Last Supper reenactment. And again, if you're interested in being in the choir, uh, ask that you contact Charlotte Dodge uh, or talk to me and I can give you some details. And then the Good Friday service will be at the Forest Presbyterian Church at 7 o'clock or the Easter Sunrise service, which will be at the Forest Baptist Church at 7 a.m. And they ask that you bring a breakfast dish for food for that. Um, May 1st, May 1st will be where we were talking about CEF. One of the missions organizations we help is the, uh, the CEF. And so they're taking tennis shoes. You can see back in the back in the foyer, we have um, snickers for the sneakers for that. And so um, tennis shoes. And so just be able to bring those in. We need those by the 1st of May. And then also if any men are interested in going in the Christian Union Men's Week of Renewal, um, we'll be doing that August 25th through September 3rd, and just remember that as well. And then also, um, if there's any other announcements, um, we will talk about those here in a little bit. So let's close with prayer. I'll shut off the recording, and then we can kind of talk about a few other things um, that's going on. And we will uh, then close the service out. So let's pray. Father, we come to you today. We're thankful. We're thankful for all that you do for us. We're all that, thankful for all the things that you do that we're not even aware of, Lord. We're thankful for your mercy. We're thankful for your grace. Lord, I'm thankful that those that are watching online are able to watch and be able to have access. And Lord, we just pray that if any of them are going through anything, that just help them to be able to reach out and be able to touch and be able to contact me or be able to contact somebody. But more importantly, that they reach out and spend some time in prayer asking you for your help. Lord, again, we thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. This time, I'm going to shut off the recording, and I invite you to come back next Sunday at 1030 if uh, you don't have a church home.